I'm going to jump into a little bit of Q&A. I get a lot of questions about intuition and some of them are fantastic and really interesting questions. Today, I'm going to start with the first one. When it comes to teaching, one of the tools that I absolutely love is Q&A, question and answer. And I love this tool. I love doing it. I actually do a Q&A session, a pretty extensive one, once a month inside my spiritual community. I'll put a link in here for you for that if you want even more. <laughs> but I love Q&A because I can teach, I can share what I know, but it's when that back and forth starts to happen that we get to go deeper and deeper and deeper into concepts. So I'm just kicking this series off. If you have a question that you want to ask, please send it in via email. If you're watching this, you know, through the video link, go ahead and put the comment right below, ask a question right in there, and I will start adding those into this series. Please also note that when it comes to questions, there's no question that's too strange. Literally, we're talking about intuition. We're talking about the metaphysical world. Most of the, of the best questions out there that come through start with, this might sound weird, but. <laughs> so feel free to ask any question. I want to tackle them all. Let's jump into our first one. The first question comes from Jessica in Idaho. This is a question that came through in email, and I thought, this is the perfect question to start this, this portion of teachings off. When it comes to this question, there's so many different ways that we can go. So I'm just going to try to stick with some, some good bullet points that you can take away, some tools and some concepts that you can apply for yourself. Here we go. Jessica's question is this. When it comes to intuition, are there specific tells that let you know when it's your intuition and not just you making it up. This is a fantastic question. Absolutely fantastic. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> and I wish that I could tell you exactly what they are, but you know what I can do? I can tell you how to find them. So let's start with some basic concepts. First off, everyone's intuition is very, very strong. Anyone that tells you different than that is trying to set up some sort of, you know, a gifted concept of this person can do this and this person can can't do this. That's not the way it works. Every single spirit in a human body has access to very strong intuition. So let's get that one right out of the gate. Everyone is strong, including you. It's a matter of opening up that intuitive channel. And we typically live a life where we don't necessarily need to open up an intuitive channel. So when we find interest in it, it comes around and we think, hey, this could be a benefit to us. These are the tools that help you to open that up. So first off, don't assume that you're not intuitive because you are. You're very intuitive and very strong intuitively. Secondly, everyone is wired differently. If we try to use our intuition the same way somebody else does, we are most likely not gonna succeed at the levels that we could if we learn how to use our intuition for ourselves, the way that our system works best. Now, with those things said, when it comes to tells, yes, every person has a tell. Every person has something that happens within their other five senses that lets them know that intuition is coming through. Now, this might be a very soft whisper in the beginning, but once you identify these, they start to be like a, a, a nice gentle alarm saying, hey, heads up, pay attention. Something coming through is intuitive and not just your imagination and you're not just making it up. Some of these tells include, but absolutely are not limited to, <laughs> uh, ringing in the ears or always get those checked by a doctor anyway, because it's always good to make sure that, you know, <laughs> it's not a physical thing. But for some, they might get a, just a quick ringing in the ear. The minute they pay attention to it and say, okay, I'm listening, the, the ringing will go away. That'll let you know. If the ringing never goes away, you might want to check into it physically. A lot of people get goosebumps or like we like to say in uh, my spiritual community, we call, we call them soul shivers. <laughs> and one of the members came up with that and I was like, that's beautiful. But that rush that goes through you, you know, you can be in 95 degree weather and you can still get goosebumps. That's a confirmation for many people. Some people, like myself, this is one of my tells, when something's coming in intuitively, I feel like the world kind of dissipates or fogs over a little bit. Like I feel a, just a slight feeling 
of disconnect from focusing on something in the human realms, in these material worlds. I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect there. And that's one of my tells to say, hey, something's coming through that's intuitive and it's it's it needs your attention. Other people have uh, maybe a sensation in their left arm versus their right arm, their right arm versus their left arm. Some people feel a sensation around their third eye, the top of their head. Some people hear, I know an intuitive from a student from years back uh, who would get a little, little voice that would go, hey, and that was it. Just, hey. <laughs> and she was like, I, at first, what does it mean? Here's another thing when it comes to your tells as they develop. And again, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you a step-by-step on how to pay attention to it. I'm going to give you a really great technique in here. But at first she was like, I just hear this person saying, Hey, or this voice saying, Hey, or maybe I'm saying, Hey, but it comes out of nowhere and there's nothing else. So we had to learn that that was, we had to test it out and try it out. Okay. Maybe that's a tell. Maybe that's not a message. Maybe that's an intuitive tell that says, Hey, something's coming up. Once she stepped into that concept, the next time she heard, hey, she said, I'm listening. And then intuition started to come through. Messages started to come through. Now, when it comes to your tell, I'm going to reiterate this. Your intuition flows differently than anyone else's. Your personality, your life experience, how you're wired, where you're located in the world, all of the experiences that you've had your intuition is going to work through that. Your intuitive channel runs through you. It's not a common one that you buy somewhere and you put it in there and you're like, all right, I've got one too. No, it's unique to you. So it is very valuable for you to learn how it works for you. And this tool today is going to help with that uh, tremendously. Also, there's a push and a pull feel to intuition versus imagination. Now, I know that this kind of steps outside of the the tells, the intuitive tells that come through. And again, sometimes people feel like a cold rush. Sometimes people, you know, see like a little bit of a a blur of a scene showing up or something like this. Or sometimes people get like a little tiny knot in their stomach that says, hey, pay attention. Tells intuitively are moments that say, hey, pay attention. And for you, the most important thing you can do is listen to the pull. When I say pull versus push, intuition versus imagination, that is the very subtle difference between the two. Imagination, when you're creating something and it is you, you're just sort of making it up because we we all have great imaginations. I don't even mean vivid imagination. I just mean thinking of something. When it comes to making that, that you know, come into life imagination, there's a pull, there's a push to it. Excuse me, there's a push to it where you feel like you are creating the next step and you're pushing out a scene and creating it and almost almost sort of painting the experience into life. When it comes to intuition, there is definitely a subtle pull, meaning you didn't see it coming, you didn't expect it, you didn't know where it was going, but it was just happening and it was pulling you along. Just knowing that push-pull kind of thought is going to help you to step into the feel of it. Is it pulling me somewhere and bringing me into something or connecting me with something or am I pushing into it? Paying attention to that is going to be a big piece for this. Now, back to the tells. When it comes to intuition, your sixth sense, which is your intuition, functions off of your other five senses. So, your intuitive channel opens, messages come through, this activates your nervous system, your other five senses, and messages come through those senses. So if you just, if there's just a knowing and you're like, I just know, guarantee you, one of your senses is alerting you somehow. You might not recognize it right away, but just having this conversation, you and me, you're going to be like, I'm paying attention now. All right. Yes, I get those all the time where it's, I just know. I don't know how I know. I just know. It's very, very common. If you sit with that just knowing moment and feel your other five senses, which will make sense with this tool I'm going to give you, if you feel those other five senses, you'll start to feel which one is speaking up and giving you that tell. That's the gold in this. So At first, you might just feel, you know, I don't know. I just know. I don't get a tell, Bo. I just know. You know, I don't get a tell when it comes to intuition. 
you do, but it's so subtle. And because we're not putting eyes on it, we're not focusing on it, we're not paying attention to it, we don't necessarily catch it. What I've seen over the years with so many students, I've been teaching the Sage Method course for so many years now and all over the globe, just amazing people. And everyone is so different and unique and so beautiful. What I have seen is when someone who says, oh, I just feel it, that's accurate. And you're right. It is an intuitive moment. You don't know how you know, but you know, it's still intuition. It's still coming through. But when they stop and review that moment and they get into that practice of stopping and reviewing, how did I know? What happened was maybe there was, it's subtle, but they catch it. And I've seen it over and over and over again where they go, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I heard the words, or I feel like I saw something flash real quick, or, you know, my memory popped something up. Once you start doing that, you start expanding in the other five senses. This is when these other five senses can start giving you a lot of tells. Say, hey, stop, gotta listen, pay attention. That's the tells. But remember, your tells are going to be unique for you. Now, let's jump into this tool because I think you're going to really like it. Uh, if you follow me for a while, you might have heard of it, but of this particular tool. But try it for this purpose. Try it to discover your tells. Try it to see when your intuition clicks on and says, hey, psst, pay attention. I'm telling you something. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do a defocus exercise. Everything that you're looking for intuitively is in the spiritual realms. It's in the in-between. It's not in the solid. So this is a defocusing exercise. When your physical eyes focus on something in this solid material world, you're not focused on where the intuition is coming from, where the messages are coming from. You're focused on this into this uh, solid world. So let's do this. What I want you to do is I want you to sit about four or five feet away from a blank wall. It could be cream colored wall. It, could, it doesn't even matter what color wall this, this is. This is in essence a, a very generic version of scrying. I want you to sit in front of a blank wall. Please make it blank because then you have nothing to focus on and nothing to draw your attention to. And what I want you to do is I want you to bring your focus to the point right in between you and the wall. I don't want you to focus on the wall. I want you to pull your focus back so your eyes defocus, so your vision relaxes. And I want you to do this, if you can do this once a day for two minutes a day for about a week, you're going to start to feel those five senses. What I want you to do is sit in front of the wall, put your gaze right in between you and the wall so you're defocused, pull that gaze off the wall, and then relax. It might take a little bit of work to keep that defocus happening, but you'll get the hang of it. And I want you to relax and I want you to say whatever comes through to let me know what my, how my five senses are reacting to my intuition. I welcome that. I welcome any intuitive information to come through right now. Please utilize my five senses to let me know. And then here's the most important thing. Stay open. Don't grab onto the first one. Just when something happens and you feel perhaps a chill, just say thank you. Thank you for the intuitive chill. Thank you for using my five senses. Please show me another example of using my five senses through my intuitive channel. And just allow yourself to relax into it. Stay open. You might get physical feelings the first time and the second time, but then you might hear something the third time, or you might hear something the first time and see something the second time. So stay open. It's not just one sense that's going to work with you. Multiple senses will work with you. Over time, you'll learn what your strengths are. But for now, just get into that defocus state. Relax. Please do GCP before you start. I'll put a link in here to that one. That's a foundational tool that you're going to love. But just start with the defocus. Do it for a minute or two a day. Do it for about a week and just say, I am opening to receiving uh, my intuitive tells. I'm opening to receive the intuitive messages through my five senses. If you need a question, if you need direction, please use my absolute favorite intuitive question. This is what I'll start you off with. My favorite intuitive question to ask in this defocus session is, what is it you want me to know? This is your moment.